निवेशर्मणीयदर्शन मंदहासुचिराननाबुज पूजित सुरनरोतमुदा धर्मनंदनम विचित धर्मनंदनम विचित श्री घनश्याम महाराज नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइटी और बिलोड घनश्याम महाराज पाथ में कैच और लिब्रेशन जय गुरु जी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू ड्यूटीज जय स्वामी नारायण फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल बिफोर बिगिन वी कथा नाउ लेट मी आस्क अ क्वेश्चन इफ सपोज यू गो टू योर फ्रेंड्स होम then what would you do there most of the answer is that playing game or if someone who is very sincere in study they may do their homework but most of them playing game and talking with the friends about study and uh games and what was uh happened in school and everything about this now the totally different from uh totally different what we are doing right now this was a true story at the time of bhagwan swami narayan bhagwan swami narayan was there at the time on earth as human being there was a devotee by the name of raja bai he was lived in a city of bhavnagar there there were so many devotees in bhavnagar city but one of friend of this raja bai he was rupa bai once upon a day rupa bai came to raja bai's house both of these devotees of bhagwan swami narayan see what they did when they met each other when rupa bai came to raja bai's house both sat in a one room and they both remember bhagwan swami narayan's divine form they were talking each other one by one many divine episodes from the life of bhagwan swami narayan this is what their routine when they meet each other they always talking about the uh, talking about the glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan as well as how to keep oneself attached with the sant and how to acquire knowledge from the sant this is what their daily routine now once upon a day when rupa bai came to raja bai's house both they both sat in a meditation position meditation position and they remember bhagwan swami in his divine form now the amazing thing happened while remembering bhagwan swami in his divine form raja bai got a divine status while he was remembering bhagwan's divine form even though he was staying in his own house even though he was staying in a room still his consciousness is not there in short he went into trance in that situation bhagwan swami narayan divinely sent him into his akshardham he was not died he was there in his house he was even in a sitting position not even laying on a ground and as a power of remembering bhagwan's divine form he went into bhagwan's divine abode aksardham in trance now there 
he saw a divine light not a small light but a mass of divine light light like that of a countless millions of suns and moons but not the the light was not like that of sunlight it is a divine light and in that divine light raja bhai saw a divine form of bhagwan swami narayan and bhagwan swami narayan seated on a middle of that divine light and surrounded him there were countless millions of muktas those muktas were also divine not like that of us now after as raja bhai had listened many times the description of bhagwan swami narayan's divine aparaksharam from the santo and then he he decided and he knew that this is a bhagwan swami narayan's divine aksharam there he can have a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan's divine form as well as he also have a darshan of countless millions of muktas now after having darshan he saw one amazing thing in the aksharam even though jinabai was on the earth still he saw jinabai there in aksharam as uh jinabai was also sitting with the another muktas then raja bai thought in his mind how is this possible jinabai was already on earth in his home and how is how is it possible there he is also here now after some time for a uh, some period of time raja bai can have a uh, enjoyment of divine eternal peace and divine happiness of aksharam a divine happiness divine and eternal bliss of bhagwan swami narayan's divine form they are in aksharam but after some time bhagwan himself instructed raja bai now your time is over you cannot stay here for more time you have to go back to your body on earth raja bai denied because just you just you think about uh, think in your mind suppose you are laying in a simple house now suppose you you will you will gifted by anybody a 15 million house a house worth of 15 million dollar then you automatically deny to accept your own old house and you definitely want to stay in uh, in this new 15 million dollar house in the same way even though a king or very great person of the nation you suppose think about the president of usa in a white house what kind of luxury is but even the countless millions more than the white house luxury in the aksharam and that is why raja bai have already enjoy this eternal divine happiness in aksharam and that is why he denied to go back to his home on earth but sri ji maharaj instructed him this is not possible you have to pass your days and years till you get death this is what the system of this earth and that is why you have to complete your years your remaining years on this earth after that when your time of death is come i will definitely come to you to bring you in aksharda now after all raja bai was ready to go back to his body on earth but sri ji maharaj instructed him now you are going back to your own body and you will definitely describe 
with uh, described to others the divine happiness of this aksardham but listen one more thing you have to explain to others sri ji maharaj said just as you have seen this jinaba in this aksardham and when you go back to your own body on earth after getting consciousness in consciousness in your own body on the earth you have to explain to the people or devotee that jinaba is in aksardham because now at the time when you go back to your own body at the time i am already in a jinaba's house with many santos and devotees there and i myself with my divine form took jinabai to my aksardham now raja bai came back to his own body and according to bhagwan swami narayan's divine command from aksardham he explained to the other devotees and eventually rupa bai was also there Raja Bai explained to Rupa Bai everything what he had enjoyed the divine and eternal bliss in Aksardham and he also explained what Sri Ji Maharaj commanded him to explain Raja Bai said to Rupa Bai I saw Jina Bai in Aksardham and Maharaj had said me that Jina Bai no more in his body on this earth because his death is come from and as he got meaning jina by got a death and bhagwan swami and himself took him into aksardham now at the time there was no phone there is no any other communication system and that is why if you have to pass one message from one village to another you have to send a person personally this is the only system at the time and that's why after two or three days the people of bhavnagar city the devotees all raja bai rupa bai and other devotees they got a message that jina bai uh jina bai no more in this earth and then all got surprised that raja bai had what raja bai had said us before two or three days that was true and what he had enjoyed the divine and eternal bliss in aksardham that is also true in this way bhagwan swami and himself given a uh, authentic uh, meaning an evidence that bhagwan himself give a proof that he is forever reside not only on this earth but also in the divine bar of aksardham and the another thing is that whenever a devotee get his death at the time bhagwan himself came to that devotee and took him to his aksardham now the another story and the last incident explained by sadguru sri kunanand swami in the 139 chapter of bhakta chintamani and that was a story of punja bhagat of the village panvi now in that village punja bhai was not a devotee of bhagwan swami narayan at that time and there was no any other devotee in the village but punja bhagat he was a devotee meaning he has a strong desire to meet god face to face and that is why he totally denounced a worldly desire from his heart he had no any kind of worldly desire even though he was staying in his household life still he has no kind of interest in his family life his parents nothing his possession he has no kind of desire and no kind of attachment he really are now he, he really living a 
renouncing life even though he was staying in a house now this is what the situation of puja bhagat but as he had no kind of attachment with any kind of santo he had no contact with the santo and that is why he cannot meet bhagwan face to face as punja bhagat daily chanting bhagwan's holy name many times and also worship all the day most of the time of the day he passes in worshiping god but he didn't know about bhagwan swaminarayan's manifestation on earth one day after becoming discouraged he had decided to do suicide and for that he decided a very holy place there was a also there was a beautiful beach and on that beach man duties had uh, installed a ceiling a form of bhagwan shankar shivji on a beach the ceiling was installed in a in such a way that when a tide increase on the full moon day the whole ling was covered by water only a tip of that ling can be seen from the beach this is what the situation and when the tide decreases the water go back at the time one can have a chance to worship the ling now punja bhagat had decided that the next full moon day when the water increase the water level will increase at the time he had decided i prepare myself for suicide and for that go to that ceiling in a water and hold the ceiling with both of his hand after holding when the water increase water level increase and with the tide when the water is already above the 6 or 7 feet deep and at the time he can also go with uh, go back in the sea with the water he according to his plan he tried to do suicide in the water by holding the ceiling with both of his hand even the water the flow of water is very high and uh, the water level is already more than 7 feet still he cannot die because of the force of water he force out from the water then punja bhagat thought in his mind how is it possible why i cannot die then he had decided now i'll try again but at the time a voice come from a sky a divine voice in that divine voice punja bhagat listen that divine voice said why are you going to lose this human birth if you want to meet bhagwan then the supreme personality of godhead is already manifest on this earth he is nobody but sahajanand swami who was staying right now in garuda and also known as bhagwan swami narayan he is the supreme personality of godhead if you want to god face uh, if you want to meet god face to face you have to go there to have a darshan of bhagwan the another thing the divine voice instructed punja bhagat that you d- you do not need to go anywhere but bhagwan swaminarayan's divine santo 
they are traveling one village to another for preaching Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine message and two of those santo came to your village and after having contact and keeping company of those santo you can have a darshan of Bhagwan now Punja Bhagat had a trust on this divine voice when he go back to his home there he found two santo in his village the santo of bhagwan swami narayan they are coming there from gadda now punja bhagat bow down to santo and he hold santo's feet and he requested please i have strong desire to have a darshan of bhagwan and i have uh, i have listened a divine voice from sky that bhagwan swami narayan is manifest on this earth and he is right now in garuda and the divine voice also instructed me about your arrival in my village now please grace me with the darshan of bhagwan then santo explain everything about bhagwan swami narayan his divine charitra his divine power everything about the system and method of our satsang everything and then after punja bhagat also went with the santo to gadda there he got a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan after having darshan he became a staunch devotee of bhagwan swami narayan whole of his life he had dedicated in service of bhagwan swami narayan even though he staying in a family life even though he was staying in his home still from his heart he had denounced everything that was known as worldly and by his pure heart he worshiped bhagwan swami and day and night this is what two incident we have listened from bhakta chintamani's 139 chapter and after listening this incident even today we have also such kind of many many divine incident but from this divine incident we should have a message we can learn something from this two incident and that is we should have trust in bhagwan swami narayan that is the first thing the another thing is that whenever we are in a time of problem we are in a time of trouble bhagwan himself every time come to us for our help if we have a trust in bhagwan swami narayan that he definitely will come to me at the time of trouble then definitely bhagwan swami narayan will come to us at the time of trouble in this way sadguru sinuskudanand swami describing this 139 chapter and fourth incident describing the glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan concluded this 139 chapter sri ganeshyam maharajani jay zoom in here do not do not that no should be hung in the middle of the
संत कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पामीए पूरन पुरुषोत्तम दाम काम दुधा कल्प तरु पारस चिंता मनि चार संत समानते एक नहीं में मन मा कर यो विचार संत समानते एक नहीं में मन मा कर यो विचार गणश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय Supreme Almighty, our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our Pujapad Guruji, Pujya Santo, all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. You know, today's topic implies for all of you viewers out there something that each and every individual possesses, something that each and individual has in their foundation, you can say. I read a quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. He quoted and said once that the true test of a civilization is not the senses, not the size of cities, nor the crops, but the kind of men the country turns out. What is Emerson talking about? He's talking about character. If I translate character in Gujarati, it would say achar. Character is one of the most important foundation, you can say, fundamental principle and personality that one can possess to kind of reflect on the person in front of him or her. As humans, our value is determined by our character. It is not one of the most it is one of the most important elements for humans to maintain. We can say character is helping the needy or donating money or just behaving politely with etiquette or even hygiene or going on a pilgrimage. But does it only end there or is there more? Is there something more? Because when we think about that word, when we hear that word, we think of all these basic surface rules or surface, you can say, topics. But is there something more deeper about character, especially when I'm talking about it in a religious aspect? Well, let's take a look. First and foremost, to get and go inside the core of this word, we first need to know what it exactly means. And according to Oxford Dictionary, the meaning of character is the collective qualities of characteristics, especially mental and moral, that distinguish a person or thing. Moral strength. Meaning, character lies more on the spiritual side, more than it lies on any other basis, according to this meaning, according to this definition. Why? Because it says moral strength. I mean, we can even see that those who have possessed character are more who are religious, are more who have somehow dedicated their lives to the religious or spiritual life more than the worldly life. Now, speaking of character, I would like to first and foremost remember our Puja Guruji. His character, what can we say? It pretty much resembles the form of sadhuta or saintliness as of right now he's at such a high post being the and managing the whole temple board of Vartal yet look at how he stays look at how he maintains his life on a regular basis staying according to the niyams according to the codes of conducts of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and doing daily 
routines. Not only that, but Buja Guruji, his humility. I've told you many, many stories, and I'm reminded of the story where Puja Guruji was traveling in the city of Vadodara, and there he was traveling in his car, and his driver, he must have hit a motorbike vehicle person who was driving in front, and the person fell down and stopped, and he got upset. He wasn't hurt. Nothing had even happened. A small scratch had happened in Puja Guruji's car and a small scratch had happened, a dent had happened in his motorbike. He got out of the car, or he got up, and he got furious, he got mad. He told, on Guruji's side of window, he told him to get his window down, and he got down. Puja Guruji got out, because he felt that this person needed to say something to him. Guruji wasn't even driving, but this person got so upset that he slapped Puja Guruji in the face right there on that spot. Puja Guruji had with him Puja Vignan Swami as well as devotees and they got furious that how could we let Puja Guruji become hurt like this or insulted like this. So they were about to pretty much capture that person but Puja Guruji said no. Do not touch him. Do not do anything to him. Instead what I want you to do, Puja Guruji told the driver, is that please give him money for his repairs on his bike and extra on top of that. And Puja Guruji folded his hands and apologized on behalf of his driver. This shows character. This is what I'm talking about today. This is what I want to talk about today regarding that Puja Guruji's life is something that is more than ordinary. It's something more than anyone's perspective can reach. It's only when one takes a deeper look that one can really understand. So, I brought with, with me some charitras of Bhagwan Swami Dhanim to help each and every individual out there listening that how should a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Dhanim, how should a satsangi of Bhagwan Swami Dhanim's character be? How should it exemplify whenever they go out in public, even in general public, how could it reflect on Bhagwan Swami Narayan and our Puja Guruji? Well, first and foremost, at one time, a large group of devotees came to Gadara to have the darshan of Sriji Maharaj. After having his darshan and listening to the discourses in Lakshmiwadi, they all proceeded towards Dadakachar's Darbar. Now it's only a small stretch, about maybe even a half a mile or whatnot, but they had to go there. So as they were walking through the main streets, there was a small boy, and obviously he wasn't trained to that adequate where uh, he didn't, he doesn't know exactly what to do and what not to do. So without looking, he spit on his right side, and the spit landed on a Jain sadhu. Now, the Jain Sadhu became furious, and at that time, at Bhagwan Swaminarayan's time, Bhagwan Swaminarayan had many, many who were against him more than who were with him. Because Bhagwan Swaminarayan was revolutionizing the whole, you can say, moral perspective of how to live a proper religious life, how to live a life without any violence. Bhagwan was changing the face of, you can say, the whole world at that point. And during that time, there was more bad than good. So this Jain Sadhu, even be being a Sadhu, he got furious that, and he started to spread a word around the whole village of Gadara that this Jain boy, or this boy of Bhagwan Swaminarayan has spat on me. So all the people around in the village who were Jain protested and closed their whole shops that they would not sell anything to anyone. That's it. So Bhagwan Swamiran got this word that this has happened and this Jain Sadhu is causing a huge commotion in Gadara. So Maharaj, he went to the Jain temple. He went up to the Jain Sadhu. He folded his hands and he said, please forgive me. 
I apologize on behalf of this small boy who has spat on you. This small boy, he, has, he does not know what is right and what is wrong. He does not know where to spit and where not to spit. So I am asking for forgiveness on his behalf. At that point, that furious sadhu who is completely upset, he completely melted. How so? Because of Bhagwan's character. Maharaj was Maharaj. And no matter what, he would stay at his position. But in order to show the devotees of the future, in order to become something more in society, to mold society, Bhagwan had to even show these kinds of characteristics. Meaning, he won over his opponents with his character. He did not use any kinds of swords or any kinds of any weapons. He was God, yet he never hesitated in asking for someone's forgiveness. He treated people of all religions with respect. He inspired others to live a polite and modest life. Puja Guruji has a saying, a quote, a life quote you can say. You've probably heard of it. And he says it many times. But just to get a glimpse of how he views each and every individual, Puja Guruji says that respect all, meaning each and every person we should te treat with respect. But follow one, meaning have respect for everyone, but have one guru or one spiritual master under you and hate none. Meaning one should not ever hate anyone. One should respect everyone, one should follow one person, and one should not hate anyone. This formula, you can say, contains happiness in one's life if one can abide by it, if one can follow it. So this was Maharaj at that time. This is how he won over his opponents. This is how he treated others around him, even if it wasn't his fault. So this is one example of how a devotee's character should be, especially even in general public. So even if thinking about that, then think about how one's character should be, and even in the temple. Saying that, I found a quote by Dwight L. Moody. He quoted that character is what you are in the dark. Meaning, what is he saying? Whatever you do alone shows your true character. And even in the Holy Scriptures, as of right now, it is mention of this, meaning ikant, when you're alone, it shows your true character, who you really are. Now, we can go as far as saying that character is the home of virtues. All virtues lie in one's character. And I just narrated to you this incident of the Jain Sadhu. But I want you to do a practical program in your mind. Just think. Don't speak a word. But just think. I want you to think about how your character is, good, bad, or in the middle, meaning sometimes good, sometimes bad. We can say every person has three characters, one that he exhibits, meaning he shows, one that he has, meaning he possesses, and one that he thinks he has, meaning he thinks he has the character of, you can say, affection or humility but he really doesn't these are the three basic components that each and every individual possesses but according to Bhagavan Swamiran standards according to his you can say level we should really see that it doesn't only end there there is something more there is something that we need to do to really express that we are a satsangi, we are a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Well, how could you do that? Obviously, there is two two sides to a coin. One is heads, 
and one is tails, right? Everyone's seen a coin, one heads, one is tails. Now re regarding that point, I want to tell you a story about keeping character and losing character. You decide who keeps character and who loses character in this story. Now I don't know if you've heard, but there is a sadhu named Sevakram. Yes? Now Sevakram, everyone knows this story. Mostly who have more spiritual, deeper knowledge. But for all of you teenagers, all of you kids who are watching, who are young, they probably haven't heard of this story. But it's again a story of Bhagwan Swaminarayan when he was Neil Converni and when he was traveling in the forest of India. There was a sadhu by the name of Sevakram. He was a Sanskrit scholar, meaning he was educated. And one day he fell ill with dysentery. Um, before you even have to look that up, what dysentery is, I'll just tell you in a blunt manner. Dysentery is when uh, you have to go to the bathroom, number two, and only blood comes out. Simple as that. Uh, I can't go any further, but I think you understand. And this is what the sadhu was suffering from. So sad, right? Well, let's see how sad it is. Uh, he had thousand gold coins, but he had no one to take care of him. Meaning he had money at that point, but he didn't have anyone to take care of him of his illness. So he started to weep and cry. And Nilk and Verney was traveling through the forest. And he saw and he saw him suffering. And obviously Bhagwan was filled with compassion, Daya. And he saw him and Sirakram said, Please help me, I'm suffering. And Marat said, Don't worry, I will serve you. I will serve you until you become better. So every day Nilkan Verni would make a bed from banana leaves, one and a half foot high, for him. Every day he would wash his spoiled clothes. Every day he would make food for him. But not even once, not even one single time, Sevakram asked this Nilkan Verni that you are making food for me, but also make food for yourself. What Sivakram would do was he would give him a couple of those gold coins and he would tell him to go to the village and get grains, get sugar get all these supplies come back and then make this for me and make that for me so I become better obviously Maharaj knew everything but he was tolerating his nature his swabhav Sevak Ram's nature his swabhav and Maharaj would make everything at even times Sevak Ram would not even give him money and Nilkan Verni had to go and beg in the villages that please give me some food I have this sick sadhu and I am serving him and he needs to become better. I need food for him. And Bhagwan would only make food for one person and feed Sevakram. But not even once did he ask Maharaj, I have this much money. We can get food for both of us. So please get enough supplies. Not even once. Anyways, Milkan Verni did not look at that. And time went by and Sevakram became better. Well, how much, how well did he become? Well, at that time, after he became better, he could, it's said in the scriptures, he can digest over 600 grams of ghee, meaning purified butter. I mean, whoever can do this task is, I mean, he's not better. I mean, he's in great shape because to digest 600 grams of ghee even a regular person whose health is good is it's not possible i don't think but that's how his situation was yet when they were traveling this sevakram would make nilkan verney carry 20 kilograms of his personal belongings on his back nilkan verney was obviously very thin he was obviously on more on the austerity tapas he was doing more penance than he should be but he carried all these things and at the end Milkan Verney realized that this Sevakran was ungrateful and abandoned his company 
whatever had happened to Sevarkram, who knows after that. But Maharaj tells us a story. In this, it, in the Vachnamrut, he narrates this in Gadada, first chapter, tenth Vachnamrut, about this whole incident that he went through. But I want to ask all of you, who lost char- who lost character and who kept character? Obviously, it's simple. Maharaj kept his character while Sivakram lost his character. This is the benefactor of keeping character. You never lose anything. You never become lower in society or in the world. Even if it looks like that, how so? Well, by this incident of Maharaj, by this incident of Nilkan Verni going through this whole, you can say, commotion, he told his devotees in the Vachnamrut, I would say about 20 years or 30 years later when he narrated the Vachnamrut about this incident. And from this incident, one Vachnamrut, Gadara 1st chapter, 10th chapter, was narrated off of this whole incident, proving that his menat, his effort was not wasted. So those devotees can realize that never become ungrateful, always stay grateful and help others out as well. This is a sign of character. And lastly, Maharaj's time, there's many, many saints who traveled and did a lot of satsang tour and preached a lot. At that time, Maharaj was in Gadara and he called Dayanand Swami. And Dayanand Swami was called and Maharaj said that I command you to go to Bhotaj the city of Bhotaj and start to preach there about the supremacy of Bhagwan Swami Narayan and etc. Then Swami folded his, hand, folded his hands and said, Maharaj, I have never ever disobeyed any of your commands ever, but today I will have to break that record because I am not educated, Maharaj. I have no education. I don't know a single thing. I can't even read. I'm illiterate. What can I do? Maharaj said, Don't worry. Let's bring Sankhyanand Swami with you. So Maharaj called Sankhyanand Swami and said that please go with Dayanand Swami and preach in Bhotaj about Sastras and supremacy of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Sankhyanand Swami had the same situation. Swami was also and said, I'm illiterate, Maharaj. And at that time, when Maharaj heard this, Maharaj said, don't worry. You will not have to do anything. Go there and start talking. Your character will work for you. Meaning, if you live a modest life, if you live a life that's pure and without any kind of selfish motive, and if you have the right intent and live by my niyams and keep me with you, then your character will speak for you. And at that time, when both of these santos went to Bodhat and preached about Maharaj there, those who were non-devotees became devotees. Even if they were illiterate, these two sadhus, even if they said they couldn't read, but how so? Because of Bhagwan's vachan, his, obviously his power, and number two, because of their pure character. This is how much strength pure character has this is how much strength that a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan possesses a sadhu of Bhagwan Swaminarayan possesses I am exactly not sure how this gadi is but I know the whole you can say uh, sad or the whole meaning of it is that sadhu ni sagri kriyai kusangi dekhi satsangi thai meaning even the most you can say beneficial kriya or action of a sadhu by a person who is a sinner if he sees this action he can he becomes a satsangi this is how much weight there is in character so in the end as devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan as satsangis of Bhagwan Swami Narayan one should realize that our character should be pure in such a way that no one becomes hurt by our speech but what is character I live here as a Barsad here at Loyadam Mandir Anjay and here I live 
Bhut Puji Santo Hir Surat Ulab Swami Puji Shri Ji Ulab Swami Puji Nilkan Swami Puji Rushi Swami Puji Nalkan Bhagat and Puji Niskam Swami and whenever I see the form of saintliness it's always seen more in Puji Swami Niskam Swami I can say how so? well character to, to him is something different I want to describe to you that by his association by his you can say contact I've realized the meaning of character is not something that's just ordinary meaning sadhuta what is character according to Puja Guruji's standards he has taught what do I mean character is something where you become selfless character is something or you put yourself behind and you put others in front of you character is something where you if you have to give up something that's going to uplift you for the benefit of others you do it character is something where you never hurt e even a smallest being around you character is something where each and every action you take each and every Kriya, meaning each and every action you perform, it's to the standard of Puja Maharaj and Puja Guruji. Character is something where not even the smallest Hari Bhagat, you can say, is ever hurt by one's action. It's so it's such a deep topic. I can't give you enough description, but I can say that living amongst such sadhus one can really understand that one really needs to implement one's life in such a fashion that Bhagwan Swaminarayan and Puja Guruji become so much pleased upon that person that by seeing that person a person can be reminded of Bhagwan himself so these are the thoughts that I had to share with you today I also want to remind all of you who are watching that winter workshop 2015 is coming up from December 25th to December 27th it's uh, it starts on Christmas Day itself and it just rides through the weekend Friday Saturday Sunday you can register on the swaminarayan.org it's a big banner right in the front page and there's also small registration buttons on the sides and if you have any questions you can email us at loyadamnj at gmail.com saying this my humble Jai Swami Narayan Shri Patim Shri Dharam Sarvadevishwaram Bhakti Dharmatmajam Vasudevam Mare Madhavam Kesavam Kamadam Karm Sri Swami Narayanam Nilakantam Bhajeshi Gansham Marajani Jai